So being an NBA basketball player, what's the hardest thing about being an NBA player? Uh, the hardest thing I think would be um, just the travel, the, the constant schedule, um, and just being away from family and friends. I think that's the hardest thing. Like, it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm living the dream and, um, you know, definitely want to make the most of it, but um, you have to try to stay level because if you, if you get caught up in the ups and downs, you'll, you'll exhaust yourself before you're 20 games into the season. Yep. And you talk about the travel and, and, you know, obviously you can stay in hotels and things like that. Good to be home sleeping in your own bed or do you get used to staying in hotels type of thing? Uh, it's always better when you can come, come back home and sleep in your own bed and sit on your couch at home and, and just relax for a little bit. Um, you know, the, the NBA takes care of us and we stay in great hotels and things like that, but there's yeah, no place like your own bed. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and I I your hardest opponent to guard ever? Uh, well, um, uh, I mean, Curry in the finals was really tough. Um, I think the point guard position is the hardest one to guard in the NBA. Uh, I'm a little bit biased, obviously, but you can go down the list of point guards and every night it's um, somebody who's all-star quality. Yep. Like Lillard, um, Kyrie, um, John Wall when he was healthy, Westbrook, yep. um, yeah, Kemba, Kyle Lowry, it just keeps going. Yeah. Impressive list, and you've got to look up and probably in the change rooms and see that your name's next to them and guarding most of them. Yeah, you got to got to know the scout report and, yeah. and yeah, just try to do your best. So. Uh, and with all the travel we talked about, uh, you've got a favourite city now, that, uh, apart from the, the home base. Is there one that when you travel you like going to? Um, well, I like going back to Golden State and Sacramento to see uh, family and friends. Um, Anything on the West Coast is nice to get some warm weather away from uh, Cleveland winter. <laughs> yep. Nice to break, break up the year with a bit of a West Coast trip and some uh, sunshine in LA. Um, what was it like to play with LeBron James? Uh, it was awesome. Yep. Yeah, it was um, pretty cool to be able to d develop some really good pick and roll chemistry and uh, whether I was handling the ball or, or setting screens with him. So. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And from, from over here, we look at those players, you know, that sometimes, and they come across as arrogant, uh, you know, big headed and things like that. <laughs> are, they, are they actually like we are, you know, down to earth type of guys, the ones that you've, you know, you've known and we're in the team? Because it's a, it's, I think it's a perception we have in Australia with those players, you look at them like that. Yeah, I think, you know, you, you never get the full story through the media, um, unfortunately, but they, they were both great teammates to me, like LeBron, Giannis, another MVP now, and um, yeah, can have a chat with them. They were always willing to, to help out and, um, you know, say good day to my family when they come over and um, yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, and, you, you know, obviously we know you've played college and, and you've got a successful NBA career at the moment. What was it like the first time you put on the green and gold and played for Australia? Uh, so it was after the under-19 world champs in New Zealand. Um, got the opportunity before I went to St Mary's to go to a Boomers training camp. And I was pretty nervous because I'd watched a lot of those guys playing the NBL before. Uh, but I managed to make the team. Um, and our first uh, trip was to uh, Brazil and Argentina. and. Um, I remember the first time I subbed in to the game uh, in my first shot, uh, Peter Crawford drove and uh, kicked it out to me on the right wing and I just caught it and shot it. I was pretty nervous and I, I don't think I even really felt the ball on my arms but uh, it was lucky enough to go in. And, um, but yeah, it was just an unbelievable experience and uh, dream come true. Yep, excellent. What passed Boomers? would you have loved to play with? So people that you, w you didn't get a chance to play with, who would you have loved to have played with? Um, obviously, An Andrew Gaze uh, is one. I, I think probably get a few assists there and passes <laughs> to him. Uh, and uh, Luke Longley as well. Yep. Uh, it's been great having him on the Boomers coaching staff and um, just passing on his knowledge and, and love for the Boomers. It, it would have been fun to play with him as well. And, I think he would have set some handy screens. Yeah, he would have been. Would have, <laughs> with some good, real good screens. Oh, I've got one final question before we wrap it up. Uh, exciting times coming up for uh, the Boomers. Yeah. Uh, and us, all of us here in uh, Australia with the USA Games and then the Canada Games. Yeah. 
what are you thinking about that? Is exciting times for, for you as a player too? Definitely. I think um, any time, you know, as the Boomers, we get a chance to play on home soil uh, against quality opposition, it, it's usually hard to get teams out here before major tournaments. And I think it's going to be perfect preparation for us. And uh, while it's exciting and there's going to be a lot of uh, buzz and, and things like that around the games, it is preparation for the World Cup. and. Uh, that's how we're going to be using it because our, our goal is the gold medal in China, not just to win these games here. Yeah, and I think that's probably you know part of what the fans are forgetting about that you guys are actually in a World Cup preparation. Yeah, and that's that's fine. I mean, we we love it that the fans are excited here about um, you know just basketball in general and especially the games coming up. Yep. And, and as a player, excited about playing at Marvel? Yeah, it's it's going to be awesome. I think. Um, you know, once in a career experience for um, all of us. And I think here in the national anthem with, you know, 50 or 60,000 people seeing it is gonna be pretty awesome.